Flow visualization and flow measurement are different. Most flow visualization techniques provide a general macroscopic understanding of the flow field. However, flow measurement techniques provide ways of precisely measuring the flow variables such as pressure, velocity and temperature. These techniques allow engineers and product designers to quantify the flow. Model results obtained by solving the flow on computers using CFD are carefully calibrated against these flow measurements obtained by experimentalists. Most flow that we see in nature are unsteady. The fluid flow variables, whether it is velocity, pressure or temperature, vary continuously with time. However, under certain flow conditions, these variables can be assumed steady. Whether the flow is steady or unsteady, we are generally interested in the mean values of these parameters. We want to measure either the spatial or temporal average values of various flow variables during our experiments. In this lesson, we will talk about steady ways of measuring pressure, velocity and temperature. When it comes to measuring the lift force generated by an aircraft wing or the downforce generated on a Formula 1 racing car or the torque and power generated by a turbine blade, it all comes down to the pressure force exerted by the fluid on the surface of these individual parts. It is because of this that measuring pressure becomes important in understanding and designing various products. The simplest way of measuring pressure is to use a barometer or a manometer. In addition to these, static pressure taps measure the pressure of a point in the flow field. The recorded value of pressure is processed through an electronic data logger. Another way of measuring pressure is through a Bolden pressure gauge. These are primarily used for measuring pressures in a closed system, such as pressure vessels and automobile tires. They are a mechanical way of measuring pressure and rely on deformation of circular tube. This straightening and deforming tube causes a deflection in the spring-loaded needle which provides the necessary pressure measurement. Velocity measurements in a flow field gives us an idea of what the flow field looks like. In fact, knowledge of velocity helps us estimate the overall resistance offered by a body as it is moving through the fluid. The entire field of aerodynamic shapes stems from this requirement to reduce the overall resistance offered by the flow. Velocity can be measured either directly or indirectly. An indirect way of measuring velocity is to obtain the overall flow rate. Flow rate provides an indication of the rate at which a certain fluid volume is being transported across the system. Knowledge of this flow rate can help us understand the average velocity of the fluid. Most velocity measurements are based on an important principle in fluid dynamics called the Bernoulli's principle. According to this, velocity of the system can be calculated based on the total pressure and difference between the static pressures measured at two specific points. It is important to note that this principle can be applied to flow fields under certain conditions. For now, it is sufficient to know that we can calculate the velocity of the fluid using the following equation. The simplest way of measuring the local velocity of the fluid is using a pitot tube. A pitot tube is an L-shaped tube where measurements are taken both on the tip as well as on its sides. The total pressure or the stagnation pressure of the fluid is measured at its tip. The static pressure measurements are taken on the side. 
the local fluid velocity is calculated using these pressure measurements based on the Bernoulli's principle. A venturi tube is another common way of measuring fluid velocity. The venturi tube has a narrow section where the flow gets restricted. This section is commonly referred to as the throat of the venturi. Velocity is calculated based on pressure drop measurements across the throat and by taking the area ratios between the upstream section and the throat. A similar principle for measuring the mean velocity of the fluid is provided by devices such as orifice plate and flow nozzles. Turbine flow meters and rotameters are other common velocity measuring instruments. Hot wire anemometer is another intrusive way of measuring the local velocity in the flow field. In this method, we insert a thin long wire into the flow. This wire is electrically heated and attempts to measure the local flow temperature. Based on the overall heat flux and the temperature difference between the wire and the fluid, a local velocity is calculated. This method, however, makes use of carefully calibrated coefficients to estimate the local velocity of the flow. Until now, all the velocity measurement devices that we discussed are intrusive. That is, they cause minor disturbances to the flow field. To avoid this and to get a precise measurement, we use optical techniques called the laser Doppler velocimetry and particle image velocimetry. A laser Doppler velocimeter or LDV focuses a beam of laser on a point in the flow field which is seeded by certain concentration of seed particles. These particles scatter the light from a laser and the scattered light gives us a sense of the local velocity at that point. Unlike LDV, which is a point measurement, we are able to capture 2D and 3D fields using Particle Image Velocimetry or PIV. In PIV, we use two light pulses from the laser through the trace particles. These light pulses are captured and recorded. The 2D and 3D flow fields are then reconstructed. Temperature measurements are an important when it comes to solving either a compressible flow or a heat transfer problem. Knowledge of temperature gives us an idea of how hot or cold a certain flow is. This is extremely important in applications such as electronic cooling or thermal management of battery packs in electric vehicles. In these applications, knowledge of fluid temperature helps engineers provide better heat transfer solutions. There are different ways of measuring temperature and they are broadly classified as mechanical, electrical and radiation based. A common thermometer which works on expansion or contraction of liquid in a glass tube is one way of measuring temperature. A bimetallic strip which is commonly used in temperature regulators at homes and offices relies on the principle that Different metals have different coefficients of thermal expansion. A bimetallic strip has two metal strips and they bend in different directions depending on the temperature they sense. Thermistors and thermocouples are common examples of electrical means of measuring temperature. Thermistors rely on the fact that electrical resistance of metals and semiconductors change with temperature. An increase or decrease in the value of electrical resistance of these metals or semiconductors help us estimate the temperature. A thermocouple on the other hand operates on the principle of Seebeck effect. Two different metal strips produce an electromotive force or voltage when there is a temperature gradient between them. The thermocouple senses this voltage and passes it to a data logger which provides the final temperature reading. It is important to note that these temperature measuring devices 
only provide a point measurement. An infrared camera senses the IR radiation emitted by a body and converts it to a temperature field. This is a non-intrusive way of measuring temperature. In contrast to all devices we discussed earlier, an infrared camera can help us provide the entire temperature field map. Usually, hot spots are identified by red color and cold spots by blue color. There are many other ways of measuring flow variables to calibrate the flow field. These measurement techniques are used by engineers across all fields to test and come up with design modifications to develop cheaper and efficient and safer products.